Let's talk about the new Apple M2 SSD speed or what's being dubbed SSD gate and why this is really a non-issue. So what I'm going to do is use real world app demonstration in photography workflow to show you why this doesn't really matter. And I will also show you some of the categories where having a faster SSD may matter, but it doesn't matter quite as much as we think it does. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. SSD size versus speed, does it matter? Where have all this started from? Well, Apple have announced a new M2 chip inside the 13-inch MacBook Pro and a newly designed MacBook Air. We're all super excited, myself included, so we ordered these machines. Once they have come in, we start to run the testing right away because we want to benchmark this new M2 against the previous generation M1 and see how much better it is. When we get to the SSD test, well, we found out that the SSD speed on the base 256 gigabyte model is slower. What may be causing this? Well, on these base model, Apple is using only one chip, one 256 gigabyte NAND chip inside these M2 Mac. Whereas on the M1, Apple is using two 128 gigabyte chip together in a RAID 0 to increase the performance. And when you add those up, you get 256 gigabyte SSD size. So if we just look at these numbers alone, it may seem that yes, this is a step back in performance. It is a way for the company to cut costs. This is what Apple didn't tell you. But what Apple engineer have also done in the background, and I have also tested extensively on this, is that it doesn't really matter for majority. And when I say majority, I mean 90 plus percent of real world workflow. And the, many of these are heavy workflow that I'm going to throw at it it makes no difference whatsoever in the performance for these machines. And I think that we are really just overblowing this out of proportion more so than it needs to be. So let's walk through some of my thought process, my testing I've done and see why I think you're gonna be okay. And also there are certain scenarios where having a faster SSD definitely does help. But if you're really using a machine in that kind of capacity, you're probably gonna look into getting a larger SSD which is also faster to start out with anyway. All right, let's take a look at our test system. For this, I'll be testing two different 13 inch MacBook Air M2. Both of them will have eight gigabytes of memory on there. One of them will be the 256 gigabyte model. The other one will be a 512 because the 512 model, instead of using just one 512 chip, Apple is using two 256 in RAID zero. So they're going back to the same pattern in the higher memory configuration. I will also be adding result for the M1 Mac Mini and also the M1 MacBook Air. Mind you that on both of these machines, for example, the M1 Mac Mini is running at a higher SSD speed and also the M1 MacBook Air is running on the higher SSD speed as well. And you will see very clearly that SSD speed alone does not really account so much for the performance in the machine. And there are other factors it plays in as well. I'll be throwing in some results for all these other machines as well, but they're gonna be very far and few in between. So don't expect much from these machine performance that I'm gonna throw in. Just what we're gonna do is really just concentrate on the SSD speed inside these new M2s. So what I'm going to show you will also cover M2 MacBook Air as well. Granted, the time will be slower because M2 MacBook Air definitely throttles because it is passive cooling only, but the performance for these M2 MacBook Pro will give you a really great idea as to how the M2 MacBook Air would perform as well. And like I said before, in many of my videos, majority of these performance degradation really comes from a lack of optimized app on the system right now. That's pretty much what it really comes down to more so than anything else. All right, what I'm gonna do is focus our conversation on pro workflow. I am a pro photographer, so I'm gonna be testing this running heavy pro photographer workflow. And you're going to see why this doesn't even matter much with the SSD speed. I have received many comments that the SSD speed does matter. How could you say the SSD speed doesn't matter? Or for instance, yeah, it matters because when the OS kernel is reading on a faster SSD, it really does matter for swap files like eh. I will show you why that really doesn't matter. So let me simply put it this way. The SSD speed versus size is a non-issue issue, or it is a manufactured issue and there is no SSD gate. To quickly show you and give you a bit more background, we're gonna be focusing on these three machines, but we're also gonna add in the Mac mini M1 as well. So what you can see right now is that on the MacBook Pro M2 base model, 256 gigabyte, we're looking at around 1.4 gigabytes per second for read and write. 
When it comes to the 512 gigabyte model on the M2, Apple is using two NAND chip instead of just one chip. So we're seeing the speed improvement over two gigabytes per second. This is very similar to the M1 MacBook Air or the M1 generation for the base model, 256 gigabyte, where Apple is using two 128 gigabyte chip together in RAID 0 to get the higher performance. Here's a chart comparing all the speeds so you can vi visualize it a little bit differently. And here's a chart comparing with the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also Ultra. As we start to get into these high-end machines with a larger SSD size, well, the speed for the SSD is starting to go up with up to 7.8 gigabytes per second. Simply put, there's really no app in the real world today that can really go in and utilize all the speed that is available on the system. And if you want to know how fast of an SSD or which one to get to use in your pro workflow, especially for external SSD, I'll leave a link to it up here and also in the description below. I made a video talking about that with extensive graph timing and everything to explain exactly what you need so you don't overspend on these SSD unnecessarily. Here's my recommendation, because all these parts are not upgradable, configure these machines based on your need today and also in the future for the SSD and also the RAM size in the system because you can't go in and upgrade these. If you plan to keep the machine longer and you keep a lot of files, maybe you want to consider getting more SSD to start out with. If you run a lot of apps together concurrently and you multitask, well, you may want to consider getting more RAM. These are just things to think about. All right, let's have a look at the result from Lightroom Classic. Everything has been retested with version 11.4.1 .1, running Mac OS 12.4. And as I found out in my testing that on these M1 and also M2 ship with eight gigabyte, Adobe does not go in and enable GPU acceleration on exporting automatically. I'll leave a link to the tutorial how to enable it up here and also in the description below this video so you can check it out so you can get the max performance out of these machines. All right, taking a look at the result for Lightroom Classic one-to-one -one preview, comparing the 256 gigabyte model, which has a slower SSD compared to a 512 gigabyte model that has a faster SSD. The 256 gigabyte model won. And yes, there is swap on the system and generally for 1000 files preview one-to-one -one for Nikon D850 45 megapixel file, we're looking at under two gigabyte file swap to the SSD. So the swap is not that big to even start out with to see any type of performance gain whatsoever. And we can see right now that the SSD speed in this situation doesn't really matter. Let's add in the result from the two M1 machine. For example, the M1 Mac mini, which is okay, you know, obviously is a slower machine, previous generation. But if we take a look at, for instance, the result from the MacBook Air, we can also see that Having the faster SSD doesn't really mean much because if the ship can't cool down, if the ship is not as fast, then you're not really going to see that kind of performance improvement anyway. Let's have a look at the export for these 1000 files. Again, the 256 gigabyte model comes out at the very top and the 512 gigabyte with the faster SSD well, it's slightly trail behind. I mean, it's not that bad. It's only about 30 seconds longer, but still it shows you that it's not faster by any means. And even though it's really close or faster, it may be just slightly faster that it doesn't really account for the price increase, especially if you don't need the 512 gigabyte SSD size. Now let's have a look at these results compared to the M1 machines. We can see clearly that having a machine with active cooling is important and also having a program that's optimized for that silicon is also important because for instance, the M1 Mac mini comes up right at the very top in this test. But if we compare these two again, they are, like I said, around 30 seconds apart and the MacBook Air took longer because obviously it's passive cooling. So when the ship gets hot, it has to just slow down the performance. There's no way to really dissipate that heat using a fan or anything like that. All right, so this is to show you for both the render one-to-one -one preview on import and also the export 1000 file that Lightroom uses really around 1.2 gigabytes, somewhere in there for memory swap to the SSD. This is not enough for us to even see the performance when we're talking about, for example, 1.4, gigabytes per second going up to two gigabytes per second speed for read and write. It doesn't really make a difference in the real world whatsoever. This is just to kind of show you the actual memory that is really using, particularly this is the focus session right now that we have done. And also this is the swap that the system is using in real time during the export. So that gives you an idea that obviously I've showed you this already that in Lightroom Classic, this doesn't matter. Well, let's continue on. 
What about when we do something in Lightroom Classic? For example, working with a very large file, for instance, a 314 megapixel panorama. This is working together by combining 14 Nikon D810 files that are 36 megapixel together. I mean, yes, it is a large file that we're creating. But here's the thing, if you're doing a task like this, chances are you're probably getting a machine with a larger SSD to start out with. In this situation, when working with large files, Lightroom start to swap a lot to the SSD. And yes, having the greater performance would make sense in this situation. But like I said before, if you're doing these type of tasks on a daily basis, day in, day out, you probably want to consider getting a larger SSD to start out with internally on the machine. And yes, it is faster, but it's not even a minute. It's close to a minute faster, but we're not seeing the performance reduced by quite half or anything like that. Because remember, at the end of the day, these are still M2 ship. It still only has eight gigabytes of memory internal to the machine. Here it is comparing the result with the other machines. Again, the M1 Mac Mini is holding its own just fine, coming up at the very top, fully optimized, so you get the idea right there. All right, what about then if we take a look at a program such as Lightroom for exporting? Version 5.4 on Mac OS 12.4. We can see that the 256 is doing slightly better than the 512 gigabyte model. Comparing this to the rest of the machine, we can see that the Mac Mini M1 is not at the top anymore, but it slots in just right between just fine. And yes, the SSD speed in this situation doesn't really matter much at all because I mean, the slowest one, for example, inside this M2 is sitting right at the top of the chart. If the SSD speed matters, then the M1 Mac Mini should have just been at the very top, right? Well, obviously, because this is using a lot of CPU, there are other factors that comes in and play a role in how the program and the app would perform on the system. Let's take a look at Capture One version 15.3 running on macOS 12.4. And for the import time, the 512 gigabyte model is faster by about nine seconds. This is pretty much what I would consider within the margin of error. So obviously for Capture One, there's no difference whatsoever. Comparing with the other machines, yes, the M2 sits at the very top because it has a faster CPU and it also has more CPU compared to, for instance, the M1. But nonetheless, Capture One is in no way at all optimized for any of these ships, both the M1 and also the M2. It just goes in and utilizes the resources that are available in a very raw way, but not in an optimized and smart way. What about the export? Well, we can see right now that for both of these machines, yes, the 512 is faster by around six seconds. That's a whopping six seconds for a much faster SSD for swab. It doesn't really matter. All right, here's the export result comparing the other machines. Obviously M2 having more GPU core up to 10 is much faster than the M1 generation. This makes sense, but this goes to tell you that there's more than just the SSD speed to consider. Is the ship, is how much GPU you have, is what program you're using, and what type of system resources that program is utilizing. Let's take a look at Photoshop. So for this, I am using Lloyd Chamber Digital Lloyd Test, and I'm using all these three tests. I'll leave a link to his website and his test in the description below. Starting with the Photoshop speed test with this, 70% RAM, 256 came up above, and I ran this test like at least 10 times, so we know the result is fairly consistent because it's an average result. However, when we increase the RAM to 90 gigabytes, well, the 512 gigabyte model is running slightly faster, but all this though is only like within the same amount of seconds, so it's really just like a second longer in Photoshop tests. I mean, it's not really a big deal at all. Here it is comparing the result to the other M1 machines to give you an idea. Interestingly enough, the M1 Mac Mini is still slotting just right in between there and the MacBook Air. I mean, let me just put it this way. It's a passive cooling. It's always going to come in at the end, right? We already know that. Photoshop Medium. This is where having the faster SSD is starting to matter, but this is a 15.7 gigabyte PSD file. This is huge. This is really large. And if you're working with something like this, then I don't think an eight gigabyte RAM machine with 256 gigabyte SSD is the appropriate setup for you. But if you really want to use it, you can. And yes, having the 512 gigabyte SSD is definitely going to show a speed improvement. And the more RAM we give it up to 90% there, we can see that the time does start to reduce by quite a bit. So if you work with this all the time and you want to get the base model, 
I guess maybe upgrade the SSD to 512. Here it is comparing the result to the other machines. You can see it all cascading. Interestingly enough, in this test with 70% RAM, the M1 MacBook Air is slightly faster than the M2 with 256 gigabyte SSD. You know, I'm not really sure what's causing this, but based on the test, this is what we're seeing right now. When we go to the 90% RAM, this is pretty much falling in place where we would expect it to be. And lastly, let's take a look at Photoshop Huge. This is 56 gigabyte file in Photoshop. This is way larger than majority of people would use, but I know there are some that use these kind of large files. So yes, we are seeing a significant performance improvement on the 512 gigabyte model. Here it is comparing it with the rest of the machine. You can see that on the Air and also the base 13 inch MacBook Pro is performing about the same. Having more SSD, more RAM is definitely something that definitely does improve the performance on these specific large file tasks. Let's talk about Final Cut Pro. And we're almost about to wrap this up. So H.264 export, no time differences whatsoever, three seconds, that's considered margin of error. Here it is comparing with the M1 machines. Again, they all cascade about the same. So the encoder decoder engine is really not doing much inside these M2 for H.264. What about HEVC? Again, the 256 is coming slightly above at around three seconds faster. But again, this is not really that big of a performance difference. We're expecting to see what a faster SSD going from 1.4 gigabytes per second to, for instance, two gigabytes per second makes no difference whatsoever in this type of task. And yes, it is because it's using the encoder decoder engine, but nonetheless, it's still reading and writing the system. Here it is comparing with the rest of the machine. The M1 in the lineup, MacBook Air come in dead last, but it's only around 11 seconds longer, not a big deal. And when it comes to ProRes 422, we start to see a slight variation. Yes, this has to do with the SSD speed in general because this 4K 10 minute file produces about a 34 gigabyte file on my system. And yes, it does matter when you have a faster SSD when you're constantly writing to it. Now. If you're doing something like this, then having the faster SSD internal and this size may not necessarily be appropriate to start out with. And you'll probably be writing to an external device to which that's another story in itself. But if we're just talking about internal, you do see a speed improvement, but it's not quite as significant as we would think it is. And this is a fairly heavy handed task. Here it is comparing with the other machines. We can see that the M1 Mac Mini with more RAM is still doing much better. So obviously giving the machine more RAM to do ProRes is definitely going to help as well. So let's answer this question. Is SSD speed an issue? Well, you saw from the result, I can tell you right now that it is really a non-issue. I don't think it is an issue. And there are very specific circumstances. For example, Lightroom Classic panorama merge, Photoshop working with medium and also large files. That's when you see the performance improvement. Working with Final Cut Pro, for instance, exporting Pro 2.2, that's when you really see the performance improvement. But those are four tasks that are very intensive, that are a subset of what majority of us are really using these computer for. And if you're using a computer to do those tasks, as I said in the beginning, you probably should be considering a machine with more RAM to start out with and a larger SSD anyway, because I mean, these are the factors that plays into working with these files. So, like I said, it doesn't really matter. In the task that it matters, it is making an improvement, but on a daily basis, using this program with just browsing the web or using it for mail or anything like that, you're not going to see a difference at all. I just want to wrap this up by bringing this back to the time when the 14 and 16 inch M1 Pro M1 Max was released. The same conversation we have back then of, for instance, oh, the one terabyte SSD or the 512 is running at, you know, 3000 megabytes per second. That's not fast enough. It's causing a performance degradation that you should go in and configure machine with four or eight terabyte in order to get that up to 7.8 gigabytes per second, let alone you're spending a lot of money to increase the size of that SSD. And if you're not going to use it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And as you're seeing right now, don't configure any of these things based on what others are saying, based on what they think is a performance degradation, because there is none. Anyway, I hope that you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new, and you not retrust.